Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, your home for all content, Lord of the Rings home. Today we're going to do a part two of a Worth the Whale series on Lord Elrond. If you're newer to the channel, I haven't done one of these in a while, but the Worth the Whale series was basically, I tell you how much I spent on a character, then I tell you whether they're worth it. I think I, what, I, what I want to do moving forward with these is kind of reframe them as, I'll tell you whether I got the character or not on like a marquee, and then we'll talk about whether you should farm them, basically, and sort of reframe it as like, yes, was it worth it to get it, but also will it worth be worth it to farm them? Um, so when, you know, Beckalu and T-Beb get announced to be moving to some farmable location, I'll do a video for them, let's say. But I wanted to do a follow-up for Lord Elrond and um, talk about kind of what, how good he is and what his uses are and whether you should be going for him. And the short answer is, of course, yes. There's a few things I want to get into because I think there's still a little bit of hesitation from some people on whether they should be going for Lord Elrond. So let's actually just address that now. Um, it's the best raid team that we have right now is the Rivendell Elves. They're good in all chapters. I'll showcase what I have for my elves uh, done just this last raid, but they're just, they're the best and they're going to be good for chapter four, it looks like, right? So that's just one reason to sort of invest in them. I think there's... I guess specifically what I want to address is that there's maybe this idea that, oh, if I can just figure out what, like, the next legendary is going to be, or, you know, once they drop the requirements for the next legendary or some information about that, I can rush for that instead of Lord Elrond, and then I'll be up in Arena. And I think that makes a lot of assumptions. One, that you'll be able to rush for that uh, particular legendary, like that you will have the resources to be able to do so. Uh, two, that, that that legendary is going to beat Lord El Elrond in certain areas. I think it's pretty common, to, th and I believe this, that the next le legendary is probably going to be somewhat anti-Elrond in Arena, but I don't. we don't know that for sure. We don't know what the team is going to be around that, you know, character. And, you know, it's, it's just a big bet to make, and we don't know how well the, that team is going to perform in raids with the next legendary. And so... That combined with the fact that they are, in fact, phasing out Arena, um, maybe by the end of this year, right? Moving over to multi-squad PvP. And that's Yeah, so that's coming either the end of this year, early next year. I don't think that's a good bet to make. I think in this particular case, what you should be doing is focusing on what we do know. Uh, because there are a lot of great benefits to Elrond. So this is my Elrond team right here. Uh, I actually just got Elodin to G10 today this morning i believe um beefy boy right there he's a uh, incredible elra here you know i'm i'm basically i've got what is that seven 17 shards left on arwen and then i will be able to get a seven star elron when that comes back around and that's going to be incredible for a number of reasons uh for arena for multi-squad pvp but most importantly raids so let's actually talk about that right now oh yeah we can launch raid. i'm going to live stream tomorrow uh, chapter one, and the goal there will be me trying to do difficulty four with my Rivendell elves. You know, of course, we'll be doing other stuff in, in chapter one as well. Uh, I've got a pretty beefy dwarf team that I like running. Um, that'll be good, but I'll be trying difficulty four. So let's just look. I mean, I got 900k with my elves pretty easily here, right? What about chapter two? Chapter two, I do feel like they could do a little bit better, but they're still my best team by far, right? Yeah, 779k with elves, and I have a 5-star Elrond, and Elodin just hit 7 stars recently. I don't think he was 7 stars for this last run either. I do it with Lomian, um, so not even Legolas is in there, right? And then uh, Chapter 3 here, 900k, right? And with the amount of buffs they spread out, and cleanses they have, and just amount of sustain that they have, I, I just feel pretty strongly that they're going to do well in Chapter 4, you know, as well. Just Elrond's leadership has this really, really nice feature to it, which is essentially that it's just this insane damage boost, right? If I go... So, one, not only does it extend Banes, which is incredible, hands out fortitude, going to be massive for Chapter 4, right? And then this plus 20% damage at max for five boons. Plus 10% max health for light squad members. This is nuts. This is by far the best leadership in the game, in my opinion. And I really think you should be going for him. So I guess 
the I skipped the part for the worth the whale where I talk about how much money I spent. And so basically I got both the Eldin and the Arwen Marquis. It's about $100 each to get them to five stars. Uh, so the first time around, obviously I got five star Elrond, but now I, I'm, you know, I'm going to get a seven star Elrond next time on my free to play account. I'm going to be getting a five star Elrond this first time, but I'm going to continue to farm the elves on my free to play account. And in fact, I actually, I got Lomian to five stars, but I'm going to stop farming Lomian and I'm actually going to just farm Legolas from the arena store instead, and then do Naramiri, Arwen, Elodin, Elrahir and Legolas, because then I can use that energy to farm somebody else. Uh, because in reality, going from, you know, one to five stars is basically the same amount of time it takes to go from five to seven stars. Okay, let's talk about Arena. And I think this is where people specifically get hung up about whether they should be going for Elrond or not. And I guess let me explain that. I think the idea here is that like, oh, people are going to get Elrond and then... You know, just like a few weeks after that, they're going to release this new legendary, which is going to be anti-Elrond, and then it doesn't matter anyway, right? And I think, like I mentioned at the start of the video, we just, we just don't know. And the people who are getting that legendary are also probably going to be getting a 5-7 to seven star Elrond this time around, because it's really hard to get the legendaries the first time around unless you're spending a lot of money. Uh, or just some amount of money, rather. And so... I don't think that's a good argument, especially coupled with the fact that, like I mentioned before, they're going to be transitioning away from daily squad arena to multi-squad PvP, right? So I don't think that's the way to do it. Uh, Elrond has been the biggest boon to my account easily. I mean, insane raid scores, which has just continued to give me more and more resources, but also in arena. I mean, I sit in Mithril 2, I climb up to Mithril 1, sometimes into champions every single day. And, you know, I've been doing it for a while. I was just mostly with five-star characters, right? And then, you know, Arwen and Elodin became farmable. I've slowly gotten them up. I slowly gotten brewed up. Elra here I had at seven stars for a while, but it's been, it's been just very, very good. And so they are a top-tier PvP team. And when, when multi-squad PvP comes out, I think it will be better to have a team like Elrond, where we already know how good they are, than a possible anti-Elrond future legendary, right? Um, so you have until November 1st. Uh, November 1st is when the event starts. It runs for seven days. So you have until November 8th. I would say if you were kind of on the fence about doing Elrond, you should still try and pursue Elrond. You should still be farming elves. Even... Even if you don't think you're going to get Elrond this time around, it's worth it to start farming the elves just so that you have this in your back pocket for when he does come back around because he's just an incredible character. So just short video, worth the whale. I uh, just wanted to basically get out that, yes, you should be farming Elrond. I know some people are on the fence about it. Most people are not, but that's the reason why I think you should be. And two, just to kind of reintroduce this series and I guess reframe it as what I want to make it moving forward, which is essentially just... I'll tell you whether I bought a character or not, and then we'll talk about whether they are worth farming or not when they get moved to a node. But that's all from me. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.